I'm Mr. Lewis. This week in history, we'll learn about the launch pad fire that nearly derailed the Apollo program and an important breakthrough in medicine. We'll also learn about one of the heroes of 9-11 and the violent death of a despised king. On January 21st, 1793, King Louis XVI of France is executed. In 1770, Louis marries Austrian Archduchess Marie Antoinette. He is 15, she is 14. They meet for the first time just two days before the wedding. They have four children together. His grandfather, Louis XV, dies just four years after the wedding in 1774, and Louis XVI ascends to the throne. He is just 19 and ill-equipped for the challenges he faces. Louis's grandfather had bankrupted the country, fighting and losing the Seven Years' War. Louis XVI further damages the economy, helping the U.S. win independence. This results in economic turmoil and skyrocketing inflation. The French Revolution begins in 1789. Outwardly, he accepts the revolution, but he's unwilling to truly reform the monarchy to appease the masses. In 1791, the royal family attempts to flee to Austria, but are captured at the border. In 1792, the monarchy is abolished. And a year later, Louis is executed. And then 10 months after that, Marie Antoinette follows him to the guillotine. On January 22nd, 1901, Queen Victoria dies at age 81. Of England's 63 monarchs, only eight have been women. Interestingly, the two who served longest, Elizabeth II and Victoria, and perhaps the greatest, Elizabeth I, were all women. Britain is unlikely to have another woman on the throne for a while, with Charles III now in power, and the next two in line are both male. In 1837, Victoria ascends to the throne. She's 18. Two years later, her first cousin Albert, a German prince, visits the court at Windsor. She proposes five days later. They marry in 1840, and Albert becomes a dominant force, serving as Victoria's private secretary. They build royal residences on the Isle of Wight and at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, and hold the first ever World's Fair. They have nine children. Albert dies in 1861. He's just 42, and it is 39 years before Victoria's own death. At her death, she has 37 surviving great-grandchildren, and her descendants' marriages with other monarchies give her the nickname Grandmother of Europe. On January 23, 1922, Leonard Thompson receives the first ever insulin injection to treat diabetes. This hits close to home, since my father had diabetes and my great-grandmother died from the disease in 1911, leaving behind nine children. Before insulin, people with diabetes didn't live long. The only treatment, a strict low-carb diet, which would buy you a few years. In 1889, two German researchers found that when the pancreas was removed from dogs, they developed symptoms of diabetes and died soon afterward. In 1910, Sir Edward Albert Sharpie Schaefer realizes that only one chemical is missing from the pancreas in people with diabetes. He calls this chemical insulin, which comes from the Latin word for island. In 1921, Canadians Frederick Banting and Charles Best figure out how to remove insulin from a dog's pancreas and use it to keep another dog with diabetes alive. With the help of two colleagues, they develop a more refined insulin from cattle, and they inject this into Leonard Thompson, a 14-year-old Toronto boy with the disease. Within 24 hours, his glucose levels drop to near normal levels. On January 24, 1848, gold is discovered at Sutter's Creek. Swiss immigrant John Augustus Sutter comes to California, then part of Mexico, in 1839. He becomes a Mexican citizen and is granted 50,000 acres in the Sacramento Valley. He builds a fort that becomes the center of his first town. Sutter copies the methods of the Spanish missions by forcing local Native Americans to work on his farms and ranches. In the 1840s, Sutter's fort becomes a stopping off point for overland migrants. In 1846, the Mexican-American War breaks out. Sutter backs the U.S., and a treaty officially ends the war in February 1848. A few weeks earlier, Sutter had hired James Marshall to build a sawmill along the South Fork of the American River. On January 24th, Marshall sees a sparkle of light in the freshly cut mill race. He rushes to tell Sutter. Sutter tries to keep the discovery a secret, but within months, prospectors begin arriving. This is bad for Sutter as they trample his fields and steal and slaughter his herds. He petitions the government for compensation, and he's unsuccessful. On January 25th, 1952, 9-11 hero Pablo Ortiz is born in New York City. Pablo Ortiz was a former Navy SEAL who worked as a construction superintendent with the Port Authority, the organization that managed the World Trade Center. Ortiz worked on the 88th floor of the North Tower, five floors below the impact zone. Flight 11 hits the North Tower at 8.46 a.m., and Ortiz and his colleagues go into action. They clear debris and determine that only one stairwell is accessible. 
They lead the people on their floor to that stairwell. Then, equipped with flashlights and crowbars, they begin a floor-by-floor -floor search for survivors. They force open jammed doors and lead people to safety. They free people trapped in elevators. Not once do they follow the people they have rescued. The tower collapses at 10.28 a.m. It is estimated that Ortiz and his colleagues saved as many as 77 people. Ortiz's name is etched on a panel at the 9-11 memorial. It is a fitting tribute to a true hero. On January 26, 1972, Vesna Vulovic survives a fall from 33,000 feet without a parachute. Vulovic was a Serbian flight attendant with Yugoslavian carrier JAT Airways. Flight 367 departs Copenhagen at 3.15 p.m. with 28 passengers and crew on board. 46 minutes later over Czechoslovakia, an explosion rips through the baggage compartment. She is the only survivor. She has no memory of what happened, so no one is quite sure how she survived. She is found inside the fuselage underneath one of her colleagues by a former World War II medic. Her skull is cracked and she has a broken pelvis and broken legs. When she wakes up in the hospital, she finds she is paralyzed from the waist down, but eventually regains motion and ability to walk. She dies in 2016 at age 66. It is one of the incidents that prompts change. In 1973, the FAA introduces universal physical screening of passengers, requiring everyone to pass through metal detector detectors and to have their bags searched. On January 27, 1967, three Apollo astronauts die in a launch pad fire. In 1961, JFK first declares his goal of landing men on the moon and returning them safely to Earth by the end of the decade. The resulting Apollo program is the largest scientific and technological undertaking in history. On January 27, 1967, three Apollo astronauts, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee, are participating in a simulation for the program's first crewed launch, which is scheduled for the next month. Grissom, one of the original Mercury 7 astronauts, had been privately told that he would likely command the first mission to land on the moon. Suddenly, a fire sweeps through the command module, killing the trapped astronauts. It is caused by a faulty electrical wire in the pressurized high oxygen environment. An extensive investigation and congressional hearings follow. All crewed flights are grounded for more than a year. Improvements are made to both the spacecraft and to protocols. More than 18 months later, Apollo 7 takes the first Apollo crew into space on October 11th, 1968. Well, you know, when you think about Apollo 1, what a tragedy. But it's interesting to, to think about how it changed history. You know, we so easily could have had Gus Grissom as the first man on the moon instead of Neil Armstrong which is an interesting thing to think about. And if you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend the HBO series from the Earth to the Moon from 1998. Um, this is a 12-part series. It's uh, done by Ron Howard and Tom Hanks, who, of course, just two years earlier had made the movie Apollo 13. Uh, and when you think about Victoria being the grandmother of Europe, well, uh, it's interesting because three of the major players of World War I have a, a, a grand child relationship of sorts with Queen, uh, with Queen Victoria. King George V of England and Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany are both her grandsons. And Alexandra, the wife of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia, is her granddaughter. So interesting to think about. Uh, when you think about the impact of insulin, you know, my great grandmother dying at age 41, uh, this was just 11 years before they figured it all out. And my grandfather was just five years old at the time that his grand that his mother died. Um, and then finally, Pablo Ortiz, you know, he's, he's one of the heroes of 9-11 and I do a project with my students every year around the time of 9-11 where they have to do a project on some of those heroes. And Pablo Ortiz is always a popular choice. Um, what an incredible person and someone that should be a household name. Thanks for tuning in.